What's up everyone? Today I'm going to be showing you how to recreate this glitchy effect in Blender. In this example we're throwing this effect over text but you can actually do it over anything. What we're actually doing is putting something in between the camera to create the effect. So what I'm trying to say is it will work on any subject that you have that your camera's pointing at. I'll also be showing a quick technique on how to render this out with transparency. The designs look really cool when you layer them over other clips. And just so you're aware, this is sort of a follow-up from one of my previous tutorials where I show the easiest way to make text animations in Blender for beginners. So if you're new to Blender, I recommend you check that out before you try this tutorial, just because I'm going to be going a bit faster in this one. So if you want to check that out, I'll be putting a link in the description. And one last thing, I just want to thank everyone who's supporting me on Patreon. Your support really means a lot to me. And with that out of the way, let's get on with the tutorial. So first things first, we're going to be creating the text animation. So just delete your default cube. And we're going to hit Shift A and add a plane. We're going to scale that up, so hit S and then 8. I want you to select the camera and hit Alt-G to reset the location and Alt-R to reset the rotation. Now we're going to hit GZ and just bring that up so that you can see the camera above the plane. We're going to put it about here. We're also going to delete this light as we don't need that. So just click on your light, hit X and delete. Now come over here to your output properties. We're going to change the frame rate to 30 frames per second. In my opinion, if you're doing live visuals, then you shouldn't be going anywhere below 30 frames per second because it just looks choppy. So it's going to be a 10 second loop. So we're going to change the end frame to 300. We're just going to subdivide this plane. So go into edit mode and we're going to subdivide that by 80 to give us some nice geometry to work with. Now I'm just going to drag in this window over here and we're going to go to the shader editor, start shading this. So hit Z and then eight, Take you into rendered mode and hit zero to go into camera. And we're going to hit N on the keyboard to get rid of this menu here. That just toggles that menu. I don't think you need it, so we'll just leave that. We're going to create a new material. Just grab whatever text logo that you want. I'm going to use one that I made. Just make sure it's a 1 1 ratio so that there's no UV stretching when you apply the texture. And now I'm going to change the world to black. So come over here, change the world to black. And we can't see the logo now. So we're going to go over here and plug it straight in. And we'll change this to an emission shader and just pop that there so we can control the strength. I'll set that to 8, hit Shift A, add a color ramp. I'm just going to pop that there. And I'm just going to flip these around so you can go over here, flip color ramp. I'm just going to put the black slider here and the white slider here, essentially inverting the color. I'll just crunch them in a bit. I'm going to widen the camera focal length a bit as well. So just bring that out. I'm going to go over to the render settings. We're using Eevee, by the way. Add bloom. Bring the intensity down because I find the Eevee bloom really strong. And I'm also going to add screen space reflections. This one's important. And we need to check refraction in order for this to work. That's really important as well. Again, we're in the render settings. We're using EV. Make sure these are checked. So screen space reflections and refractions. If you scroll further down, we can go to color management and we can add our look. It's very high contrast. So it pops a bit more. I'm going to turn the overlays off now. So that's just this bit here. So let's add a displace modifier. We're going to add a new texture and we're going to add the wood texture. I'm just going to bring the strength down a bit because it's quite strong. And I'm going to use an empty to control the rotation of this displacement. So if you hit Shift A, add an empty, add a cube, and let's key in a simple rotation on the Z axis. So apply a keyframe on the Z axis, go over to here to 301, 360, add another keyframe at 301 so that we don't get a duplicate frame when we render it out. It will basically stop the animation from stuttering when you try to loop it. So just make sure you give yourself an extra frame. And with your mouse hovered over here, A and then T, and set the interpolation to linear just so that we have it constantly spinning around rather than accelerating and decelerating. So with that done, let's assign the empty to the displacement. So we'll go to coordinates. We'll change the texture coordinates to object and we're going to assign the object to the empty. Scale up our empty. So hit S and just scale that up till it looks roughly how it used to. And now what you'll see is this empty is controlling the displacement. So as it rotates, it sort of moves like that and it's a perfect loop. We've got this text animation now. Uh, this is just going to be our default sort of base and now I'm going to add those glitchy sort of effects that I was showing you about go out of render mode so Z and then six just save what you got yeah just save what you got and we're going to add another object so hit shift A add a mesh and we're going to add an icosphere leave the subdivisions as they are we're going to use a subsurf modifier to control the subdivisions of this so we're just going to scale this icosphere up a bit just so it fits the camera. You don't want it to clip into your plane. So we're just going to bring it up a bit. So G, Z, bring it up. Maybe just flatten it a bit as well. Just like that. Now hit zero. But this is what we're going to use to create the glitchy effect. So back into rendered mode. So hit Z and then eight. And 
select your icosphere and go to the material properties. We're going to add a new material. We'll call this refraction. This is where the magic is going to happen in these settings that we checked earlier, the refraction and the screen space reflections. So we need to delete this principal BSDF shader. We're going to hit shift A and we're going to add a, a refraction BSDF and we're going to plug that into the surface. And you're not going to be seeing any effect just yet. And that's because there's one more thing we need to check. So the checklist we have is screen space reflections, refraction. And then if you go over to the material properties, we need to add this screen space refractions here. And now this should start creating these glitches. And what this is doing, the, the shader is essentially like kind of like glass. And this is based, this object is basically kind of transparent like glass but it's sort of refracting based on the angles of the geometry we have a few parameters we can play with here you can play with the refraction depth here and you can also play with the roughness to give it a sort of distortion and you can also play with the idr uh, which sort of spreads it out a bit and you can also change uh, these modes though i'm not too sure what they do i think this changes the way the roughness works so i'll just leave it as beckman or whatever it was by default i can't remember but that looks good so yeah what you can do is you can add a displacement again on this icosphere now. So we'll add a displace modifier and you can actually add a new texture. We'll do this one clouds and we will scale it up a bit, drop the depth down and you can actually sign displacement to the same empty. So coordinates object and object empty. And now that will move the displacement like it has been doing with the empty. And if you want to add more uh, fractures, you can just add another modifier and add a, a sub, what's it called again? A subdivision surface modifier. And if you just pop that above the displacement, this will add more fractures to your geometry. And you can add as many as you like, as well as many as your computer can handle really. It's worth noting, if you don't know about this modifier, this is the amount of subdivisions on the viewport. And this one is the amount that will render out. So if you're rendering it out and it's not looking the same as how it looks in the viewport, it's because these two values are different. Uh, so just make sure you're keeping them the same. The actual reason for this is because the more subdivisions you have, the, the slower your computer will be. So sometimes you might want to have uh, it as one when you're doing your editing. And then when you render it out, you might you can basically go a bit more crazy because you're at the rendering stage. But we'll just leave it as free for now and you can sort of see what we're getting. So. We could scale this down a bit or we could scale it up. This is probably not the best example because it's not fitting in the frame, but you can kind of see what you can do. You can basically animate anything here. And what you can also do, I think I'm going to scale this down a bit. I think it's the displacement that's too strong. So I'm going to drop the displacement a bit. And also I think I'm going to change the displacement settings. So we'll change the size so it's a bit more janky. And also you don't have to do clouds. You can change the noise basis here. You could do Voronoi Crackle, which will definitely make it a lot more glitchy. Just play around with different displacement textures and noise spaces to get different results. So the wood one looks quite cool still. And you can also add a mirror modifier as well on this icosphere if you want to, I guess, make it a bit more symmetrical. One more thing you can do as well is you can actually make this uh, thing transparent. So say you want to blend it, blend the glitches in and out. You could hit shift A and a mix shader and you could pop that there and add a transparent BSDF, plug that into the other input. And now all you need to do is go back over here to the uh, settings of the material and just change the blend mode to alpha hashed. You can um, blend the, uh, the glitches in if you want to do it like that. So this could be animated, right? I just want to show you some other things you can play around with. You can play around with the refraction depth again. You don't need to have that mirror modifier as well. You can also try Click on your icosphere, go to the object, change it to smooth shading. That will change the look of the refraction. If you want it to look a bit more smooth or if you want it blocky, you can um, shade it flat and go back to a more janky look. Basically, you just want to play around with all those different things until you get something that you like. And then what you can do is just save different variations of, of these because all of these will loop perfectly. So you can just save loads of different variations of these and just render them out. Whichever results are your favorite, you can... Uh, you can keep so it could do nebmo glitch smooth 
And then we could do Nemo Glitch flat. And then you don't have to use the Refraction BSDF. You can also try the Gloss, which does a similar thing, but in a different way. You can plug that in and you'll see you'll get different sort of styles. And again, just play around with all of these parameters. So I'm going to shade that flat. I think the Gloss one is a bit more noisy. It's worth noting you can use these to change the color. And you can actually duplicate these icospheres with different colors. So you could have this one as like red. And then you could uh, sort of create like chromatic aberration effects if you want. We're just making copies of the material. And then we're just changing colors. So you could do something like that if you want. I'll shade these smooth as well. You will need to move the icospheres so they're in different positions. And they intersect to create this effect. So yeah, just to recap, I'm duplicating the icospheres. And I'm making a copy of the material. So there should be a number there. That you make a copy because when you duplicate it, it will keep the same material slot so if you make changes it will end up changing everything so you need to like press either the copy button or the number thing that creates a copy so i'll save that one as nebmo chromatic you can still change the displacement and on your actual plane if you want to so this could be clouds if you want to have a different sort of wave i'm just going to delete these icospheres because i don't want them let's bring that back to refraction it's worth noting you can also rotate the actual object as well which will create some different sort of movements so for example see this object so i'm going to create another one so you can even rotate this object rotation on the x-axis and change that to 360 by keyframe and then a t set interpolation to linear and that will just uh make a different pattern of refraction I will just put the displacement a bit on that. Like you can see, there's loads of different sort of options that you have with this. And you just got to experiment really and just create a bunch of different sort of styles. Sometimes when you mess around with the refractions, it's, it's going to obviously push your logo out a bit. So you can just offset that by widening up the focal length on your camera. And that should help you with that. Now, let's say you want to make this transparent. You might have some issues with that just because. So if we didn't have the icosphere involved to make this transparent, this is what we would do. We would, we would go to our plane and we would need to add a mix shader here. So hit shift A, add a mix shader and we would, we would plug our image texture into the mix shader and then we would hit shift A, add a transparent BSDF and we would plug that in. And you're noticing we're not getting any transparency yet. That's because we need one more option to select. We need to go over to the render properties. We need to go to film and transparent. Now the world's uh, transparent, but obviously the plane isn't. So that's why we need to change it in the shading settings. So that's why I've added this transparent shader here uh, on this plane. Uh, you can see it's not working at the moment. And that's because there's one more thing we need to check. We need to go to the material. And again, like we did for the icosphere, uh, we need to change the blend mode to alpha hashed. And now we're getting transparency. Uh, but obviously it's making the whole plane transparent. So what we can do to fix that is just plug the image texture into the fact. And there we go. That's sorted. So that's cool if you want a transparent, simple wave logo. So that's fine. But if we have the icosphere, it's not, you're not going to get the transparency because of the way the icosphere works. It, it's its own object. So it's not actually, the, ref the actual object is rendering out as well. So this is a bit trickier. You can't really make it transparent like you would here. But there are some tricks you can do uh, to get some cool results. Um, so what you could do is I'm just going to shade this smooth again on our icosphere. We already have this transparent shader set up with the mix shader, so that's good. But what you could do is hit shift A. You could add a gradient texture. You could plug the fac into the fac. And now we're getting a sort of gradient of transparency. And you want to hit shift A and just add a color ramp Pop that there. You can use this to crunch in the transparency. This is a pretty shitty uh, gradient uh, with the node wrangler add on enabled, which you need to go to edit preferences, search for node wrangler, make sure that's installed with that. You can hit control T, uh, which will create these nodes for you. You should be able to rotate this so it sort of fills out just the bottom and then you can maybe we check. I think we change this to object. Yeah, change that, change that to radial and you can rotate and give it something like that. And you can then rotate the actual icosphere itself. So it goes like this. So if you click on the icosphere, add a keyframe on the rotation. Again, do a 360 degree rotation. So it's perfect loop. And we'll hit A, T and linear. It gives you this sort of like scan line effect. I thought it looks pretty cool. Just play around with the settings until you like it really. And you can even have it rotate around different axes. So we'll, we'll save this one as like 
scan line, I don't know, radar, and then we'll save another one. Ghosty blend, and then you can change the rotation on this. Basically, I'm just throwing different ideas that you can try to get different results. It's up to you guys to play around and do it however you want. But I'm just trying to show you some, some things that I found when I was doing it. So you could do this, and now you've got this sort of half transparent thing sort of coming around like that. It's probably better to have a different empty controlling the icosphere than you have the plane. Because the only because I want to I want to make some changes to the glitchy bits, but if I change the empty, it, it changes the um, displacement of the plane as well. That's just one thing to note. It's still looking pretty cool. So yeah, I hope this gave you some ideas. Um, the only thing left to do is to render out your animations. It's worth noting if you're rendering out transparent ones, you have to either render them out as image sequences in PNG or anyone that supports RGBA. So you can render out in PNG as image sequences uh, with RGBA selected, or alternatively, you can go FFmpeg video and you need to have the QuickTime codec installed. So if you can't find QuickTime here, uh, I think you need to go onto the Apple website and just, yeah, I think you need to go to the Apple website and install it through there. So just select QuickTime and we still can't see RGBA. So you need to make sure your video codec is QT animation. And now you can select RGBA. Uh, without that, you're not going to render out uh, transparency. Uh, so let's render out this animation now. So just save it somewhere you can find it. So this is where it's going to output. Now all you've got to do is hit render and render animation and you're done. Just really quickly, I wanted to show a few more things you can do. You could take the displacement back to local on your icosphere and instead of rotating on the z-axis, I've just rotated this on the x and now you're getting these sort of movements and just drop the refraction depth to zero. I thought this was quite a cool one. And then the IOR, play around with that, you get these sort of cool looks. Pump that high, you get sort of glitches like that. But you're not going to get transparency on these ones. So once you've rendered out your designs, you can just throw them into Ali. I recommend you download this, this little program. It's called Resolume Ali. It's completely free. It's just a, a video player, but it plays most codecs. It's, it's basically used to convert your files to the DXV3 codec, which is the best codec to use with Resolume. But it works as a great video player as well, in my opinion. So I would download that anyway. But we're going to use it to convert this into DXV3 with Alpha. So we'll convert these just so it performs better in Resolume. And now we'll open up Resolume Arena. And you can just throw in your footage. It's got these two ones now. And now because they have alpha channels, you can easily layer them over. Right guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And if you feel like you're gaining value from the content that I put out, consider supporting me on Patreon, where you'll get instant access to this project file, along with other Blender tutorial project files and other perks that I put up on there as well. Feel free to check out more of my work on my website, which includes uh, VJ loops, music and more tutorials. You can find that all at nedmotion.co.uk.